We are here at Sun and Fun, and we wanted to talk shock absorbers. Now, I know right away you're already glazing over, folks. Shock absorbers, how important are they? Well, they're pretty important. Next time you arrive at the ground, think of what the airplane's doing for you. We go way back in time to the Wright brothers. They probably had no shock absorbers. Who knew about that then? And then along came bungee cords, little elastic things that are still in use. Unbelievable. We've come up a little further here with this airplane we see behind us, but we're going to go all the way into the modern age. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm going to talk with Matt McSwain here, and he's going to bring me up to speed out of the world of bungee cords. <laughs> into the world of whatever these are and into the next world that he's going to tell you all about. Matt, let's start back with the bungee cords. Okay, well, obviously the bungee cords were the way of the future back in the 20s and uh, stayed the way of the future up until probably mid-60s sometime when they come out with the coil spring that, uh, that this currently has on it so, now. So, so when does this date to about? Uh, about the 60s, mid-60s mid is when 60s. somebody comes so up with it. So this is high technology it's, in the 60s. It, yeah, huh? this is premium technology for Much the day. better than That's the old right. bungee cords. Light years ahead of yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. But these bungee cords and these coiled springs have one thing in common. They just suspend. That's say. correct. They, they have. They what have, does that mean? Now, well, people hear suspension, they think that means it does everything. Well, what, what you have is you have a rebound in compression that is uncontrolled once you do that. So you, you have the air lifting the wing and you have the weight of the plane pushing down and when you become into ground effect and you actually land you have a, a, a reverberation quote unquote of the coal spring going back and forth along with the bungee cord going back and forth there's no actual dampening of it it's just a spring or a bungee going back and forth so that there, there's absolutely no dampening whatsoever so you've examined this and and when a bungee cord or probably a coil spring suspension system hits the ground the tire kind of keeps bouncing back and forth without the airplane doing any more of it it's it's got energy it's got to unload that's correct that's and correct. you've got a better way to unload that is that the point that that's the point we we were approached with with coming up with uh uh, our technology uh, to dampen the the shock or the the plane once it once it landed. If you looked at it on an oscilloscope, uh, it would just be a constant wave. Where you know, if you have an air shock, uh, it would still be a constant wave. But we wanted to take a uh, a, a fluid and a dampening uh, system and apply it to the airplane where it would calm it down. And once you once you land, you've landed. It just stays there. Then yep. it, 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 the fancy engineering term is it attenuates. Yeah, that, that, uh, correct. Meaning that it, uh, it 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 takes that energy and dissipates it correct. without putting it back into the airframe again. Absolutely. Which Absolutely. is a not good thing. Absolutely. Some of those hard landings that people have, they've got some pretty big boy tires on here. There's even bigger ones, and Absolutely. some people don't like those because. The tire itself has that some rebounding effect. Correct. Can the correct. shock absorber that you guys make uh, calm that down, to use your phrase? That's correct. We, we, we started life with a 29-inch tire and developed our shock system around a 29-inch tire. So we, with a conjunction with the bigger tire, our shock actually works better. Okay, cool. So now let's talk, before we go look at how your new one replaces this, because we're here at American Legend, by the way, one of our favorite companies, and they do a lot of neat work. They're using a coiled spring on this one. They got one of your new ones over on the other airplane. Correct. We'll go look at it in a minute. But first, tell me a little bit of your background. Um, you told me an interesting thing as we prepared for this about you making wings, too. I don't know what that's got to do with <laughs> we, shock absorbers, we, we did. We, how does that part work? We did. We, uh, we came out of the racing industry and uh, still have our hand in the racing industry, but we were approached by a good friend of mine, Troy Woodland, who owns Just Aircraft, and uh, when he was developing the Superstall, uh, we, uh, we, we uh, come together to uh, build his wings for uh, the Superstall aircraft. Um, so we, we started building the, the Superstall wings, and as progression took place we kind of looked at things and said okay we you know we can make this shock better for you so uh, our shocks are OEM uh, equipment on the Superstall for all the just aircraft and and it just as we got the got to looking at more and more components we took the the racing side of the world that we come out of and we applied them to the aircraft industry which you know is is a little bit behind but being experimental we, we had the ability to do things and make them lighter and stronger and better and and uh and so we progressively went from helping troy build some wings to all the way up to designing our own new line of shocks. Pretty cool thing there. I mean, everybody's going to get the, oh, super stole. I get the shock thing there because oh. we've seen the video of the airplane coming down to the ground and absorbing a great deal of energy, but right. you're also building the wings for them. <laughs> so that gives you some uh, what I'll call street cred Thank you. in the aviation <laughs> world. If you're building wings for somebody, you must be doing something right. I hope so. So you ought to be able to do <laughs> shock absorbers, which everybody thinks is a simple little contraption that just does some stuff and they don't think any more about it than that. Right. That's not true. Right. So you mentioned that about in the certified world where bungee cords got approved, simple as they may be, and then coiled springs, 
a lot of these fellows use them because that's what's already out there, but it's old technology. Like some of our great engine companies are making old style engines. And in the modern world, we can do better than that. And the light sport, light kit, ultralight sector can use whatever they darn well please. So they are embracing what you're doing. Is that it? You, you named a bunch of airplanes. Can you name a few of those for me right now? Just yeah, so we, we specifically uh, worked for about two years with a carbon cub. And so we have a direct bolt-on application for, for any bungee style pull-type system. Uh, uh, carbon cub is what we Replacing this component down here that we're seeing That's right That's correct. Image. A pull-type okay. you know, pull strut. Um, and so uh, Carbon Cub, Legend Cub, actually we worked with Legend Cub and uh, got them dialed in and, uh, and, and, and so we we're happy with their package and, and what we strive to do was to make an individual uh, pull type shock for for each application and having a database now with the Carbon Cub, with the Legend Cub, with the, uh, all the different manufacturers that we work with, we can apply the, the dry weight with the wet weight with the geometry. The motion ratio plays a lot. The, the fluid viscosity, uh, the shim stack on the compression and the rebound. We have a huge database. So if anybody has an airplane, all we need is some certain parameters and dimensions and we can specifically dial your shock in for your plane. Hey, you probably just mentioned a few terms there that most people went, all that stuff's in a shock absorber? <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know all of that, yeah. so I'm sure a lot of our viewers didn't know it either. Right. Cool stuff. I want to go look at the other one over there, but uh, I want you to tell me that business about you. Uh, your partner, Eric, said, well, it's not just about all those things you mentioned <laughs> about the shim stack and the viscosity and those other kinds of technical terms in the shock world. You also found out about geometry. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, what, what we learned was you know, our, our mindset was a little bit wrong. Uh, we had flawed thinking in the beginning that we were going to make one shock and it would fit every application out there that had a pull type strut. Well, as we found out, the motion ratio, which is the dimension from uh, from this point here to this point to this point, and the, the diameter of the tire is a huge, huge uh, relationship to the spring rate of the shock. And so with an air shock, it's kind of different. You can add or take away air and, and you still have it. But again, an air shock does not provide dampening. It just provides what I call control. So what we did was internally, we had to get a progressive rate spring and we have different rates of progressive rate springs for each geometry or each motion ratio and applied that. Also, uh, the viscosity of the oil in each progressive rate spring dampens in dampens that specific shock in a different way. So just so you have a, uh, to say you have a 1500 pound progressive rate spring, okay, and it tops out at seven inches. If you use zero weight oil, just hypothetically, and you put 50 weight oil in it, it's a totally different shock. Now I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot more inside those little tubes than we know about, than most of you know about it. <laughs> it's but most Formula of One don't. technology, honestly. Let's go have, <laughs> over and have a look at one of the modern <laughs> ones right, now, let's do replacing it. this old tried and true uh, coil spring system, and let's go look at what you've got. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, so now we've come over and we're looking at another American legend. We looked at the airplane that had the coil spring on it. Correct. Now we're looking at, well, modern technology here. So tell me a little bit more about how you do what you do, why this is better, go into a little more of that, and then let's talk about the geometry as well. Okay, no problem. All right, so so what you have here is, is our direct replacement for a bungee type system or coil, coil spring type system. And what it is is it's essentially two bolts uh, per side, right side and left side. and you take your two bolts out of your bungee system or whatever type pull system that you have and uh, you replace it with what we provide you which is just uh, two bolts we have a uh, rod uh, heim joints on both sides which provide full articulation and uh, on both ends as opposed to a bolt and a washer and a sleeve um, so these are all pre-pregnated uh, mono balls uh, so they're self-lubricated and uh, and once we have the length and we have your uh, critical measurements and your your weights we uh, we actually put together your shock absorber for you and uh, it's a ready to bolt on system. So you got to get a certain amount of information out of the aircraft manufacturer to know what parts to make. Correct. But of the parts Eric is holding down here, Correct. the black tube is what's doing all the magic. The rest of it is just an extension basically. Correct. Yeah, what we have here is we use uh, all 7075 aircraft grade aluminum uh, in both our, our housing and our extension rods and we use all stainless steel components uh, along with our 7075 construction with the mono balls. And inside of here we actually have a, a gas strut, a piston, we have a, a progressive rate spring, we have two internal uh, fail safe stops uh, in case the spring would happen to break if you have a 10G landing. Uh, I, I don't know what uh, would some, happen. Something 
inside is yeah. going to fail, <laughs> yeah. not the landing gear. Yeah, so so as opposed to a bungee system, if you break a bungee, you're stuck. If, if you break something inside of here, it's only going to go to a uh, 2.6 inches, and then it stops. You're not going to have the same performance, but you're not going to lose something correct. either. Correct, absolutely correct. And is this a lube joint up here? No, th this is where we uh, uh, put our nitrogen, or, or you know, in, in worst-case scenario, air pressure. Uh, but is it a, an emulsion-type shock? So it is all over over air pressure or nitrogen pressure is what comes from the factory or what we put in it. Um, so, uh, you know, if you want to fine-tune your shock, you can just use a regular air gauge and, and add or take away uh, pressure. And, and, and give me just a simple example of what that means. Now you're talking about an owner or a manufacturer? Absolutely. Or, if or an owner call, it, Once we build your shock, if an owner says, hey, you know what, uh, I'm down in Florida and I think I'm going to Idaho. and uh, we go, Ah, and, okay. And, Temperature and yeah, altitude difference. That's correct. That's correct. Um, so, so the viscosity of the oil will never change. But if, if you want to increase or decrease your compression or your rebound, depending on your altitude or, or your elevation, uh, you, you know, this is adjustable right here. And it's as simple as an air gauge and an air chuck. And, a, and an owner could do that then? Uh, very easily. I'm getting ready to fly minutes. out west. I, Correct. Just, I can do it myself Correct. with some instruction. Absolutely. From okay, that's pretty cool. So yeah. that makes it a fairly uh, versatile shock. Again, uh, coiled spring. Invented by, we're told, by Darren Hart of uh, American <laughs> Legend. That was a Paul Prober isn't the invention. I did not know that, so we learned something new. But the old coil spring, the old bungee cord, don't have any of that flexibility. Go to another altitude, another temperature, you still got what you got. That's right. And it's not going to perform any better. That's right. This has versatility to it. That's right. Very adaptable to your scenario. Pretty cool. Yeah. A, a lot of great stuff about this. I never knew I didn't know so much stuff about shock absorbers. <laughs> and obviously, there's still a lot to learn, I'm thinking. Right. But uh, so, very cool. Tell us a little bit about your company, what you do, what you're, you're both wearing uh, some red, white, and blue here. What's that all about? And then we'll get an address from you. Well, thank you. I appreciate you asking. We're, we're, uh, we're a solely veteran owned company, uh, and we, we proudly employ and support our veterans. Uh, you know, unfortunately, he was in the Army. I was in the Marine Corps, and we fight about that every day. But uh, needless to say, we're a veteran-owned company and very proud to be, uh, very proud to support our troops, and uh, and we employ and support them. Uh, we we came from, again, from a racing industry, racing background. We still dabble in that as well. Uh, but our focus and, and our energy and our passion now is airplanes. And uh, for the past five years, we have just solely focused on taking the technology uh, from the racing industry, which is light years ahead, you know, as we finally realize, uh, and, and kind of adapting it to the airplane world to make Make them safer, to make them lighter, and to make them stronger. Bring us aviators kicking and dragging into the modern era, <laughs> that's, huh? That's right. Well, that's you right. know, we finally got our panels all figured out now. We're <laughs> ahead right. of most people now with our glass cockpit, so that's right. about time we got our suspension right. <laughs> that's right. Give me a web address so we can find out even more. Okay, you can come visit us at www.acmeaerofab.com. Okay. And, uh, and we'll, or you can look us up on the web, give us a call. We'll be glad to answer any questions. All right, we'll be glad to do that. We'll have more about uh, Acme and their products and their shock absorbers and all the other stuff they're going to do, and there's more to come I heard about that you're Absolutely. probably not wanting to talk about yet. <laughs> you find more about that and all kinds of affordable aviation, including American Legend, on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Matt, Eric, and myself here at Sun and Fun. Thank you.